Hello friends, I am Har Simrat and this is my colleague Gurpreet. We are your trainers for the session today. Now today we look at conversation skills, specifically at etiquette and courtesy. You've already done some sessions on conversation skills and you have some sessions coming up too. So this session is rather useful because in this session we will learn certain useful phrases. In addition to complete sentences, a good conversation also consists of certain appropriate expressions. We'll try to master these phrases today. We'll also learn appropriate response in simple situations we face every day. And finally, we have exercises and solutions for you. So let's proceed with the session. Look at your workbooks, please. You've got a list of the simple situations you face every day. These are asking for permission, invitation, acceptance, refusal, making an appointment, apologizing, accepting apologies, expressing gratitude, answering to gratitude, and finally answering the phone. I hope you understand what all these situations mean. Asking for permission, Agya Mangna. Invitation is Nimantran. Acceptance, Swikar Karna. Refusal, Mana Karna. Making an appointment. Now making an appointment is Kisi Se Samay Lena. Apologizing, Maafi Mangna. Accepting apologies. Kisi ki maafi swikar karna. Expressing gratitude. Dhanyavad bolna. Answering to gratitude. Jab koi dhanyavad bole, to aapko kya kehna chahiye? And finally, answering the phone. Ab telephone uthane mein to hum sab expert ban bhi chuke hai. Magar, along with these situations, we'll cover that again. So let's proceed with the session. Now tell me, what is the situation in which you would use this expression? Thanks. Or... Thank you very much. Look at that list in your workbook. You got the list of the situations and pick the situation in which you would say thanks or thank you very much. Yes, you're right. It would be the situation expressing gratitude. जब आप किसी को धन्यवाद बोलोगे तो किस तरह बोलोगे थैंक्स और थैंक यू वेरी मच नाउ लेट्स हियर सम फ्रेजेस इन विच वी वुड एक्सप्रेस ग्रैटिट्यूड नाउ इफ आई टेल माय फ्रेंड गुडप्रीत हैव अ कोल्ड ड्रिंक व्हाट वुड ही से थैंक यू यू फॉरगॉट योर पेंसिल बॉक्स इन द क्लास हियर इट इज थैंक यू वेरी मच so these are two simple examples in which you would say thank you or thank you very much or even shorten it to thanks look down in your workbooks you got an exercise the question is would you say thanks in the following situations and we have to decide whether or not we would use the phrase thank you or not I'll ask my friend Gurpreet to conduct this exercise. So, shall we start? The first sentence is, you're wearing a lovely dress. You're wearing a lovely dress. The second sentence is, pink is not your color. You're too dark. Pink is not your color. You're too dark. Thanks for your support. Thanks for your support. The next sentence is, You can borrow my book. You can borrow my book. The last sentence is, Do have lunch with us. Do have lunch with us. Now let's check the solutions of the following exercise. You're wearing a lovely dress. Thank you. Pink is not your color. You're too dark. Thanks for your support. You can borrow my book. 
Thank you. The last sentence is, do have lunch with us. Thank you so much. So I say thanks in certain situations. I don't say thanks when someone is thanking me. कोई मुझे धन्यवाद कह रहा है तो मैं वापस धन्यवाद नहीं कहूंगी कुछ और कहूंगी यूल फाइंड आउट वॉट इन द सेशन लेट्स मूव ऑन नाउ इन विच सिचुएशन वुड यू यूज दिस एक्सप्रेशन हेलो येस हु इज कॉलिंग नो सरप्राइज वी ऑल नो वी वुड बी यूजिंग दिस सॉर्ट ऑफ एन एक्सप्रेशन वेन वी आर आंसरिंग द फोन Now, what is that icebreaker on call which we've talked about many times before? If you're right, it's hello. Now, when you're answering the phone, you may say hello. May I know who's calling? You may say yes. This is so and so. You may say hello. May I help you? So the question is, would you answer the phone with these words? Look at your workbook, please. There's another exercise in your workbook. Would you answer the phone like this? And I'll hand over the exercise to Gurpreet. And the first question is, who are you? Who are you? The second question is, why are you calling me? Why are you calling me? Good morning. I'm Rekha. Good morning. I'm Rekha. Yes, whom do you want to speak to? Yes, whom do you want to speak to? Hello, how are you? Hello, how are you? Let's discuss this solution. The first, who are you? Now that sounds rather rude. That's not the way you answer the phone. Now we've talked about answering the phone before. When you pick up the phone, you need to make an acknowledgement and then you should actually identify yourself. So who are you is really not enough. This is like saying, aap kaun bol rahe ho? It's not good. Let's look at the next one. Why are you calling me? That sounds rude. That sounds unnecessarily aggressive. Okay, those are not telephone etiquettes at all. Good morning, I'm Rekha. Simple. Rather simple, rather polite. Good morning, I'm Rekha. So you may answer the phone in this manner. Let's look at the next. Yes, whom do you want to speak to? Okay, some people don't like to identify themselves on the phone straight away. This sounds polite enough. Yes is an acknowledgement. And then, whom do you want to speak to? You're politely telling the person, Aapne kis se baat karni hai? Boli hai, Aapne kis se baat karni hai? That's polite. That's all right. And the last, hello, how are you? <laughs> that's not the way to answer the phone. Hello, how are you? Now you don't know who it is at the other end. So you can't speak like this. Now let's move on with the session. Now in which situation would you use this expression? May I or can I? Now we've done these words in our sessions on modals, haven't we? May I and can I. Can and may are permission words. We use these words while asking for permission. Let's see a few examples. My friend Gurpreet would be helping me here. Is it right for me to say, can I go to drink water? No, if you're asking for permission, you should always use may. May I go to drink water? All right. So I'm wrong again when I say, can I borrow your pen? Yes. You should always ask, may I borrow your pen? Actually, both words are grammatically correct. But may is better than can. So the correct way to ask permission would be to use may I. So look at your workbooks again. We come to the next exercise. The question is, how would you ask for permission in the following situation? 
and we'll ask Gurpreet to conduct the exercise again. The situation is, you build a bus, an old lady is sitting on a seat meant for two people. And how would you respond to it? What will be the appropriate response? May I sit down beside you, ma'am? I want to sit down here. Push up, please. Is the seat taken? Let's consider the solution of the exercise. Now, when you board a bus and you want to sit down beside someone seated on the seat, the correct way to ask for permission would be, may I sit down beside you, ma'am? That sounds polite enough. May I sit down beside you, ma'am? The second response is rude. You don't speak like that. And the third response, is the seat taken? Uh, frankly, you're wasting your time. Come straight to the point. May I sit down beside you, ma'am? That's better. So let's move on. Now, in which situation would we use this expression? Would you like? Would you fancy? Will you? Now, when you use words like would, would you like, would you fancy, and will you? What sort of a situation is it? It is correct. It's an invitation. How would you use these phrases in making invitations? Would you like to have a cup of tea, Gurpreet? Yes, please. Will you come to the party? I will. Thanks for the invitation. Would you fancy travelling in a bullock cart? No, I wouldn't. So these were invitations. I invited my friend to have a cup of tea or to come to the party or to travel in a bullock cart. Now you don't have to accept an invitation. You may choose to refuse it. Now look down into your workbooks again. Let's come to the fourth exercise of the session. How would you invite your friend in the following situations? And what are these situations? Yes, Gurpreet? To have lunch with you. Second is to see a film on Sunday. And third, to attend your birthday party. Okay, let's see the solutions to the questions. To have lunch with you? Will you have lunch with me? Is the correct answer. Second, to see a film on Sunday? Would you like to see a film on Sunday? Is the answer. Third, to attend your birthday party, I would like you to attend my birthday party. So that makes it very clear. How should we make invitations? Now let's go on with the session. In which situation would you use this expression? Not at all. Don't mention it. You're welcome. Not at all, don't mention it, you're welcome. We use these expressions when we answer to gratitude. Now let's look at a few situations in which somebody thanks me and I have to answer to that gratitude. Thank you. You're that. welcome, Gurpreet. Thank you, you have been so helpful. Don't mention it. Thank you for your hospitality. You're welcome. So in all these situations, I am responding to somebody thanking me. You're welcome. Don't mention it. Or you're welcome again. So now look down into your workbooks again. You've got a question on this section. How would you respond in these situations? The first question is, thanks for the coffee. Second is, thanks, you've done so much for me. And the third sentence is, would you like to have lunch with me? Now let's look at the solutions. Thanks for the coffee. And the answer is, you're welcome. 
Thanks, you've done so much for me. The answer would be, not at all. Would you like to have lunch with me? You're welcome to join me. So that was rather useful indeed. When people say thanks, how should we accept their thanks? Now let's go on to phrases like sorry and I didn't mean it. Now when do we hear these phrases? That's correct. We hear them when somebody is apologizing or when we apologize. Now let's look at a few situations where we would apologize. Hey, Gurpreet, that's my book. Sorry, I thought it was mine. Let's look at another situation. Hello. Have I woken you up? Yes, I was sound asleep. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to disturb you. Now, Gurpreet has apologized in two situations. If I say you've taken my book, he would say sorry. I shouldn't have done it. Sorry, it happens. In case he gives me a call when I'm fast asleep, again he says I'm sorry. He didn't mean to disturb me. So now please look right down at your workbooks again for the next exercise, which is, would you apologize? Now here's a list of situations. Do you think the situations call for an apology or not? So Gurpreet will read the situations out for you and please consider each situation carefully. And the first is, Hey, you're sitting on my favourite chair. Second, that's my seat. Third, I want your shirt and your dark glasses. Fourth, join us for lunch. And the last, ouch, you stepped on my foot. And look at the solutions now. Hey, you're sitting on my favourite chair. Now this sentence doesn't call for an apology. Second, that's my seat. Yes, it does call for an apology. Third, I want your shirt and your dark glasses. No, you do not have to apologise in this sentence as well. Join us for lunch. No apologies in this sentence. Fourth, Ouch! You stepped on my foot. Yes, you've got to apologize for that. I think that was very helpful because we should only apologize if required. We should never apologize if not required. Now let's come to the next situation. Yes, please. Okay. All right. You're on. When do you use these expressions? In which sort of a situation should I say yes please or okay or all right? That's right, it's when I accept an invitation. So these are your acceptance phrases. So let's look at our, our exercise for this situation. The exercise is entitled Ye Dil Mange More. My colleague Gurpreet will of course join me for this exercise. Would you like to have a cup of tea, Gurpreet? Yes, please. Let's see a movie on Sunday. Okay, I'll book the tickets. We are going to the zoo. All right, I'm driving. Now, how would you accept the invitation? Now, look down in your workbooks, please. It's time for you to work hard. You have to give us the answers on how you would accept the invitation. What are the questions, Gurpreet? The first is, let's become partners. The second is, do you want to be my roommate? Third, have a cup of tea. Now let's look at the solutions. Let's become partners. You answer it as, okay. 
Do you want to be my roommate? Yes, I do. Have a cup of tea. Yes, please. Now, you may have noticed in all the situations we've discussed that you often use a single word or a phrase and sometimes you do use full sentences. So we talked about this at the beginning of the session that it's very important to know how to use phrases as well as sentences where conversation is concerned. Let's continue with the session. In which situation would you use these expressions? No, thank you. Sorry, but I'm afraid I can't. In which situation would you say no thank you or sorry but or I'm afraid I can't. That is right. It's when you refuse an invitation. It's your refusal. Now let's look at a few examples. Would you like to have a cold drink? No, thank you. I have a sore throat. Do you want to see the match on Sunday? Sorry, but I'm going with my classmates. Let's go to the carnival. I'm afraid I can't. I have to study. Now let's note something. When you make a refusal, that's not all. You don't just say no thank you. You also give some sort of a reason that is supposed to soften your refusal. The other person does not feel bad when you give a soft sort of a refusal. So now look down in your workbooks please. Now you have to refuse the invitation. What are the questions? Let's become partners. Do you want to be my roommate? In the last, have a cup of tea. So they are the same questions as in the last exercise. In the last exercise, you accept it. And now you have to refuse. How would you refuse? Let's look at the solutions. Let's become partners. Sorry, but I'm someone else's partner. Do you want to be my roommate? No, thank you. We have very different habits. Have a cup of tea? No, thank you. I don't drink tea. So, when we say no, we often give a reason why. For instance, in the question, have a cup of tea? No, thank you. The next question is, why not? Don't you drink tea? So you may as well say it yourself. No, thank you. I don't drink tea. Similarly, do you want to be my roommate? If you don't want to be his roommate, why not? No, thank you. We have very different habits. It's not that I don't like you. It's just that our habits are very different. Now let's come to the next situation. Now when you hear phrases like, shall we meet in Let's meet in, how about? What is this? This is making an appointment, setting a time. Kisi ke saath time baand lena. So let's make a few appointments. Let's see a movie on Sunday. Okay, shall we meet in sector 17? Let's meet at the park tomorrow. We'll take a brisk walk together. How about a tea party on Dad's birthday? Good idea. We'll invite all the relatives. These are a few examples in which we were making appointments. I agreed to meet Gurpreet in Sector 17. I suggested that we meet in the park tomorrow. And he asked me to arrange a tea party on his Dad's birthday. So these were appointments in a sense. Now look down in your workbooks yet again. For every situation you have an exercise and this one is no different. We have to make appointments. So it's a fill in the blank exercise. Hi Preeti. Dash see a film on Saturday. Okay. Dash at the theatre for the morning show. Alright. And afterwards, dash a shopping trip, I need to buy a pair of shoes. 
good idea. Now let's look at the solutions. Hi Preeti, let's see a film on Saturday. Okay, shall we meet at the theatre for the morning show? Alright, and afterwards, how about a shopping trip? I need to buy a pair of shoes. Good idea. So that's how we can make appointments in our social life. Let's see a film at a particular time. Shall we meet somewhere again at a particular time? Or how about a certain activity? But of course, in case you want an appointment with a doctor or a dentist, it is a lot more official than this. Now let's come to the last situation that we have for you. In which situation would you use this expression? Never mind. It doesn't matter or don't worry. I'll repeat, never mind. It doesn't matter or don't worry. You use these expressions when you accept apologies. You can say things like never mind, it doesn't matter. The same meaning, don't worry. Let's see a few examples. Now if somebody says sorry to me, how do I say it's all right? I'm sorry. Don't worry. Sorry, I've had your coffee. Never mind. I'll get another cup. Oh, I'm sorry to bother you. It doesn't matter. I'm not busy at all. So again, you might have noticed that we do use the phrase which means it's all right, but then we add something else. Now a good conversation would actually run on. Don't just answer the question. Add something else so that it doesn't come into the question-answer format, but it becomes a run-on sort of a conversation. But before we look at all that, I would like you to look at the last exercise in your workbook as far as the situation analysis is concerned. The name of the exercise is, how would you accept apologies in these situations? first situation is, sorry, I didn't notice you. Second is, I'm sorry to bother you. Third, did I return your pen? No, I'm so sorry. Now, let's look at the solutions. Sorry, I didn't notice you. Don't worry. Second is, I'm sorry to bother you. Never mind. Did I return your pen? No, I'm so sorry. It doesn't matter. Okay, so by now we've gone over a long list of situations and we've taught you appropriate response in these situations. Asking for permission, invitation, acceptance and refusal, making an appointment, apologizing, accepting apologies, expressing gratitude, answering to gratitude, answering the phone. We've given you examples, we've given you small exercises and I hope by now you're confident that you can deal with all these situations easily. Now next we have some additional exercises for you. In the first exercise, you have to tell us what do these expressions convey. What do these sentences express? Let's look at the first. Fantastic. I love it. Great. Apart from these situations and your appropriate response to them, good conversation also expresses certain feelings and emotions. If I say fantastic, I love it. Great. What sort of a feeling do I convey? Now good conversation also consists of certain interjections. What are interjections? You know the answer. You've done a session on interjections, haven't you? An interjection is a word or phrase which expresses strong feelings. So in case I say fantastic, I love it, great, what sort of a feeling do I express? 
that's right i show enthusiasm josh so repeat after me fantastic fantastic great so this is an interjection of enthusiasm keep the word josh in mind okay now in case i say thank god at last what sort of a feeling do i convey shukar hai shukar hai is the word so this is an interjection of relief so again repeat with me at last you know the relief has to be heard in your voice at last thank god this is an interjection of relief now in case i say what goodness good heavens again it's an interjection of surprise kya kya ho gaya what good heavens goodness now this is an expression of surprise these interjections convey surprise now what if i say things like absolutely not you have no right that's so unfair i am trying to protest this is not fair hum log kehte nahi hai bilkul theek nahi hai this is not fair now we can say things like that's so unfair you have no right tumhe koi haq nahi hai or absolutely not that's an interjection of protest finally if i say things like so what i couldn't care less i don't mind i'm trying to show indifference these interjections would show indifference i don't care aap jo marzi kijiye mujhe koi farak nahi padta i can say things like i couldn't care less i don't mind so what if i dislike something i could convey that with an interjection like how awful what does awful mean awful means bad but not bad as in terrible it's bad as in boring how awful how sad what a bore these interjections convey dislike and let's come to the last category go away leave me alone get lost now in polite conversation we should actually not use these interjections get lost no certainly not leave me alone maybe go away go away is also rather abrupt these are interjections of rejection rejection kisi ko mana karna rather rudely mana karna nahi main nahi manti so these are also important in conversation you see good conversation does not consist of only sentences it would consist of words certain words for instance all these interjections it would also consist of certain phrases like all the etiquettes and courtesies we've discussed and of course good conversation would consist of proper sentences now we have a final exercise for you in your workbook so pick up your pens please in this exercise you have to choose the appropriate expression for every situation or scenario you've got three options you have to choose the right option What's the first option, Gurpreet? To attract someone's attention, let's look at the options. Option A, come on. Option B, as I was saying, and option C, excuse me. Now let's look at the solution. To attract someone's attention, yes, you're right. The answer is C, excuse me. Let's come down to the second question. to start a conversation option a as i was saying option b hello or option c in your case to start a conversation the answer is hello let's come down to question number 3 to express approval the options are definitely not Option B Well done. And option C Shut up. 
Yes, the answer to this question is, to the express approval, the answer is, well done. Let's come down to another question. To show that you understand something, the options are A. Of course. Option B. Be careful. Option C. To sum up. Now, let's look at the solution. To show that you understand something, the answer is of course. Another question. When someone sneezes, you say, pardon, option B, bless you, or option C, excuse me. And the answer is, when someone sneezes, we say, bless you. And what do you say when you sneeze? Excuse me. With this, we come to the end of the session. Now you have to agree it's a very useful session because we use these etiquettes and these courtesies every time we speak. We converse with people every day and we should be using all these expressions and all these responses in a correct manner. So I'm sure you agree with me that this lesson is most important indeed. With this we come to the end of the session. Gurpreet and I wish you all the best. Till we meet again, happy learning. Bye-bye.